Andy, we always enjoy when you're here because you always bring us neat critters to look at. <laughs> but this time you have fish. Yeah, and not only fish, non-native fish. Non-native you know, fish. Yeah, at the Nature <laughs> Center, we you know may suggest bluegill, uh, sunfish, bass. But for most home ponds, that's beyond the capacity of the pond and mm -hmm. really probably not what you want. You want something ornamental. So I'm here today to talk a little bit about ornamental fish. Okay. And in selecting the fish, you've got a lot of really good options for you. But uh, one thing you really should take into mind is that size matters. Okay. Like, uh, uh, I'm talking about water features in, in yards with some capacity to them. Some of the self-contained fountains like that are really attractive and give really pleasing sounds of running water, but probably would not be uh, good for fish. Hmm. Uh, one of the most important things to take into account when deciding on which fish you want is the surface area, the top of the water, how much surface area that you have. That's important because that's where oxygen uh, exchange, gas exchange takes place at the surface. Okay. Uh, uh, something else you need to consider is the volume of uh, water that you have because as we'll talk about a little bit later, some fish need a little bit more space to move around. All right. Uh, but uh, basically, as a rule of thumb, you uh, want to start off with no more than one inch of fish per one square foot of surface area. Wow. So that's pretty easy to calculate. Okay. You do need to know the volume of the pond, though, and you calculate that basically. Give, you try to square it out, you know, multiply the length times the width times the height, and then go online to find a calculator to convert the, you know, your sure. cubic feet into gallons. But roughly one cubic foot of water is seven and a half gallons. Okay. You'll need that for water changes and medication and such. Uh, you can stretch the, uh, the general rule of thumb as far as the uh, surface area to as much as two or three uh, inches of fish, including the tail uh, uh, wow. per square foot. But you start getting you get in, in some dicey water. You want to consider not only uh, how big the fish are when you get them, but the fact that they grow. Get bigger, right. So really the top uh, three types of fish for home ponds are minnows, goldfish, and koi. Okay. And so a lot depends on the size. Uh, you know, start, starting with the minnows, they're the smallest. Uh, the best fish for, uh, I think, for your home pond, for if you just want a few fish in there and you have a small feature, could be rosy minnows. They're readily available. There's some in the tank here. Okay. There are also some gambusa. Those are live bears. They look sort of like uh, big guppies. Uh, they're particularly good at mosquito control. Oh, good. And even small features that you, you know, maybe you have a, uh, some papyrus or lotus growing in a pot with water, you'll probably want a, a few small minnows. Uh, nothing too extraordinary to take care of mosquito larvae and such. In fact, in any uh, water feature, the fish are going to eat the mosquito larvae. That's, 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 <laughs> that's a good thing, as they say. <laughs> that's, that's a real good thing. Uh, probably the most popular fish, one I would hardly recommend if you have the space, uh, would be a goldfish. Okay. Uh, goldfish originated in China. They basically were in the rice paddies and saw these, these fish, and they picked out the most colorful ones, and they kept breeding and breeding until they get the goldfish that we know today. How about that? Okay. Uh, I divide them into, you know, uh, uh, regular goldfish and fancy goldfish. Okay. <laughs> what, what I call regular goldfish are the good old common goldfish. It's pretty plain Jane orange fish, but uh, also in that uh, uh, along the same lines, you can get comets that have long tails, and then have other types of uh, the single tail goldfish that vary with color patterns. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of variability. They have uh, uh, orange, white, yellow, red. Uh, also, uh, multicolored ones they call shabunkins wow. that uh, have black, blue, along with the orange and red. My personal favorite, and I brought one today, he's kind of at the top yeah. right now, but uh, is, is called a sarasa. It was actually uh, all this uh, goldfish or uh, 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 Chinese, the uh, Japanese uh, worked on them really hard, and the sarasa is basically a red and white goldfish. It's pretty. Like that uh, looks like orange and white. That's what Tennessee <laughs> volunteer orange well, and white. I think well, we're, we're calling it red for now. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's the breed. You, know, uh, you know, the color also depends on what you feed them. You know, you get a lot of beta carotenoids in their food. Really? It brings out the red coloration. Oh, wow. Uh, the Japanese uh, also went to town on a fish that we now know as koi. Yeah, I know about the koi. Yeah. Uh, koi are not goldfish. They're not even related. Wow. The Japanese started looking at uh, brightly colored carp. You know, just the carp like you know, on the dinner table or you know the grass carp and that sort of stuff yeah. uh, and they grow to pretty good size uh, the uh, carp as you know can go three or four feet uh, typically most koi uh, max out at a foot to two feet but they can grow as long as three feet so obviously if you've got a small pond you you think about 
minnows, you go to goldfish, and koi are really for specialists. Okay. Uh, they need a lot of water uh, 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 quality, they need depth, you need a pond about three feet deep, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, at least uh, for them to be uh, have enough room to move around. And a lot of code requirements, I believe 18 inches is as deep as you can have on the pond wow. safely without having additional requirements for, uh, for fencing and such. Okay. Water quality with all fish is important. Uh, you can increase the amount of fish that you can have uh, in a pond or water feature by filtration and aeration. And what that does, it helps clean the water mm -hmm. and also uh, increases the uh, surface contact you know, with the surface area. But if the power goes out, you're kind of up a creek. <laughs> yeah, you're in you know, trouble. <laughs> uh, generally, the fewer fish that you're comfortable with, the better uh, the fish are and you are. Uh, uh, it, but the, all of them need uh, clean water, but the koi are the most finicky. They're terribly inbred, and so they're really delicate, and, and just small changes in water quality can affect them. Okay. Uh, one thing everyone needs to do, though, for water quality, with or without filtration, is to figure out how to regularly change out the water. Uh, fish are the only animals that swim around their own waste, <laughs> for yeah. example. Yeah. And you've got a, a small contained area there that exposed to their own waste. Yeah. Also, they grow a little bit bigger. They put out hormones and all that that sort of inhibit the growth of uh, 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 other fish in the tank. You wow. know, you've heard about fish tend to grow to um, you know, the size of the container, uh, and that's not entirely true. You know, if you dilute the water, you're sort of increasing the size of the container uh, okay. continually. Uh, but keep in mind the adult size of the fish. Like I said, goldfish will max out at 10 or 12 inches, and uh, you know, the difference between uh, 10 or 12 inches and two or three feet sure. is substantial, and you just really have to keep that in mind if you get stars in your eyes about koi. You gotta be uh, uh, willing to take it on. Uh, one question I get a lot about fish is about feeding. And yeah, I, I was gonna ask you about that. Yeah, yeah. I do recommend feeding the fish. If you just have a few fish, you know, they can probably find scrounge up enough to eat and all. But if you feed them, they will come up and, and recognize you and you'll have a chance to check them out for signs of disease mm -hmm. or distress. Uh, it's important to recognize signs of uh, disease or stress, both in taking care of your pond and picking out the fish that are going to go in it. Okay. So uh, you go to a reputable uh, dealer and you look for fish that have erect fins. They're not gasping at the surface uh, and don't have any obvious blemishes or uh, you know anything that would. If you see a red flag, avoid it and get another fish. Okay, Andy, we appreciate that. I learned so much about fish. How about that, Mr. D? Yeah, I can understand the inbreeding part. There's not a lot of choices in there. <laughs> yeah. you know, there's, there's only like one male and one female, so, you know. Well, actually, uh, happy fish will breed in, in, the, in the reproductive But there's strategies. not a lot of choices. Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, I can see that. As long as they're happy, they're fine, right? Yeah, exactly. Thank you, Andy. We appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. All right.